In studio with us is Sharifa Ali Niftkhodin. Uh, she's here to discuss pro poor tourism, uh, which is something she's actually written a book on called Pro Poor Tourism in Alexandra since 1994. She's also the founder of Inspiring Woman Network and the operations director at Excel Nexus. I don't know how you find all the time for it, but welcome <laughs> to the studio. Uh, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to be here. Right. Okay. We're going to start on the, on the very basics here. Um, yes. What is kind of pro poor tourism? Uh, proper tourism is tourism that look at alleviating poverty within a particular environment, as well as looking at sustainable solutions so that um, the alleviating poverty is not short-term, but rather a long-term solution. And the tourism industry is one of this industry identified as an area where you can look at sustainable solutions, where people can uh, find uh, employment or working within an environment where they can be self-employed an entrepreneurial within the tourism industry. Yeah, because these are, these are kind of becoming buzzwords in, in tourism around the world. Is this proper tourism and responsible tourism where the money is going to the local communities as opposed to being used to fund massive exactly, multinationals. Ex exactly that. Um, you know, what happens a lot in, in your, um, and especially third world countries, is that you find a nice en enclave, as we called it, or resort places, enclaves being closed off for um, the best beaches, the prime areas, and we send tourists there. They pay the tour operator outside the country right. the amount that they, towards their holidays. So you'll pay, out of that country, you will pay in US dollars, euros, or etc. And then you go to this resort that is in a third world country, have a wonderful time there, but that money does not reach the people who actually live in that area. Um, and what we're looking at is uh, looking at areas where you can work with the local communities, ensure that they are the people that, employ, that are employed. They have an actual stake in that place because it is their natural beauties right. and it's their spaces and that they work within those um, conglomerates that are putting the money and the investment in there and they actually earn at the end of the day and it creates livelihoods for them and, and it becomes sustainable. Otherwise, you know, if things don't work out or the conglomerate has, uh, they get tired of the resort, they can pull all them, their money and their funds out and, and nothing is left for yeah. these people. And but in most cases, the natural habitat is already then spoiled and cannot be utilized. Right, okay. So what you're talking about is actually partnerships between these sorts of places and, and the local community yes. as opposed to necessarily, you know, uh, people traveling just to stay with the local community or traveling within the local community. Yeah, uh, it, it's basically based on that. However, the book is not based on that specifically. Okay. Mm -hmm. What I try to do to hone into our South African situation, and in South Africa we do a lot of uh, that kind of sustained development, especially on the outsides of the cities. If you go to places like um, our game park, they would have an, an agreement with a local community and the local community will run the tourism stalls or, or sell their crafts, etc., or be even part of, um, of the actual development of the area. Um, but nothing is done, done in urban tourism. So I use that as the criteria with my book. And that just makes it a little bit uh, different and um, that I use Alexandra Township. And right. Alexandra Township is less than five kilometers from Santon, yet is seen as the shadow with um, that Santon uh, is uh, shining out of. And it, it lives in the shadow and it cannot seem to pull itself out of that from a tourism point of view. And that is what I based my um, research on is that can we create sustainable development within Alexandra's township that they can prosper? Right. And, and a lot of it is to do with mindset, with policy, etc. So I tackle those kind of okay. issues. Well, that, that was my next question, was how much s support does this kind of thing get from government? Um, government has been, and uh, the reason why I use Alexandra Township, because gov um, Alexandra Township was one of the focus areas when government um, came to power in, in 1994. And wonderful policies were created by saying, uh, within government, that said, um, the white paper came out and it said, let's look at, a sustainable workforce within tourism, a development within workforce. Let's concentrate on women, entrepreneurs. And the policies were put out right. there. And it, it was more about taking the policy and now let's make something real and tangible on the ground with it. Right. And I looked at beadcraft because um, we looked at, uh, crafting was one of the areas they looked at. And they looked at how do we develop beadcraft within Alexandra Township and it becomes sustainable. And that is where um, SA Jewel was one of the projects that was run through Houting Tourism to okay. develop that kind of idea. Teach people a skill, let they use the skill and let them start making 
beads and uh, beaded items and sell that. And that do why Alexandra Township was utilized for that specific focus and a lot Soweto. Because right, there right. was there was nothing um, 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 uh, as I said there was nothing in Alex at the time apart from other development tourism okay. development and infrastructure etc. So I looked at that and I looked at did it actually work? Well, that's that was my <laughs> next question is I think yes, anybody looking it, at Alexander might did it, did it actually work? And a lot of it is based on notions and you know you can't sell first of all you can't sell something to someone if you don't believe it. All right and and. That was the first sort of challenge I found. When I said Alexandra Township, I have many of our own South African citizens looking at me and taking 10 steps backwards, like, what? What are you talking about? We don't go there. Mm -hmm. Now, how can you sell a place if you haven't been there, right. if you don't want to go there? Um, then if we, and if you go down to any Santon hotel and you go to the concierge and you say, I want to go and do a township tour, they will tell you, go to Soweto. Mm, mm. So that is one of the challenges we had. And although um, so the part of developing and, and having these initiatives is that we have to support these initiatives. So how can we support it if we don't know that it's out there? So that is one of the challenges I found. The second part of the challenge was that all this infrastructure was taking place, all the development, um, uh, all these uh, training of women, we, they trained, SHL trained 45 women um, who knew absolutely nothing about beadcraft, were unemployed, and they trained them how to do beading, and then they would make things, they would get a table, they would make things, and they will earn. Right. But nobody trained them how to run a business. Is this, is this a model that uh, we can see extended across South Africa, or is it something that you've it, just... It can be done, but there's a lot of, um, there's some flaws in it, um, yeah. but it was new, like anything else. It would have teething problems. It was a success model in its initial phase. Right. It won awards overseas. Um, it traveled with SA Tourism abroad. It, it was honed in, and it was, it, it, it got, it, it received the accolades, but nobody looked beyond that. And I think, it, number one, it could be to do with a time factor, um, how much time